Welcome back to the Wildcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, I want to do another update to the Uvalde shooting that happened last month uh, in Texas. And uh, I did an initial video when it happened, right after it happened, and I talked about the basic facts that we knew. And I talked about the fact that the Justice Department had in, uh, started an investigation into looking into exactly why the cops waited so long to go in. That investigation is still going on, but nevertheless, a law enforcement adjacent type of organization called the Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training Center put out a report today blaming one of the cops for not shooting the suspect before he entered the school. So... I have lots of problems with how the media and these law enforcement adjacent people have been blaming the cops here. The media has spent more time blaming the police in this case than blaming the criminal scumbag, the murderer who went into the school and shot him. All the, you know, cop haters have come out to attack the police. Obviously, that's uh, predictable. Uh, and the media has gone along with it. All the mainstream media print uh, publications who are still covering this are just attacking the cops every day. So uh, it's fine to attack the cops if they actually did something wrong. And if, if the Justice Department finds that the cops actually were cowards, and I would be happy to say that, but that uh, that uh, investigation is not complete. In this particular uh, video, I'm going to be going through what the, the report from this organization said. Uh, it's uh, called ALERT. That's, the, that's what their name adds up to in acronyms. Um, but I have some things to say here, and I have a very good explanation for why this police officer waited instead of shooting this guy in the back, as everybody says that he should have done. Now, this is all in retrospect, okay? Before the shooting had happened, he had no idea what was going to happen. Everybody who's commenting on this now is doing so after 19 children and two teachers have died. Of course, we wish that he acted, but we have to look at it from his perspective when he saw the guy go in, okay? And I'm going to fill in a uh, some of the blanks here about why he might have not shot. He called his supervisor to get permission and everybody's attacking him for that. Okay. And I think it's very unfair. And if you guys are thinking that I'm somebody who's just pro cop or something, I am not. Uh, the Justice Department just indicted uh, a violent cop who uh, beat uh, a suspect who was cuffed. I, I'm totally supportive of that. I was totally supportive supportive of the prosecution of Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin could have should have gotten the death penalty. I think he got off too easy for killing George Floyd because the sentence for murder is death. The punishment for murder is death. Okay, in my opinion. So Derek Chauvin should have been executed. He killed a citizen on the street. And the Justice Department goes after uh, cops who violate the civil rights of people by beating them while they're cuffed, which is unacceptable. After you have subdued a perp, there's no reason to use physical force on them. If you do, you are the criminal. I want cops to be punished even worse if they did something wrong. But if the cops didn't do something wrong, I'm not going to attack them unnecessarily, which is what the media is doing. I think it's very unfair to the to, specific, to the specific cop here. So here's the report, right? This is what the report found. According to this organization that I said, Alert, Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training Center, which is a center that trains police officers for certain situations like um, hostage situations. And they put out this report and this is what they found. Prior to the suspect's entry into the building at about 1133, according to the statements from police officers, a, uh, a Uvalde police officer on scene at the crash site observed the uh, suspect carrying a rifle outside the West Hall uh, entry. The officer, armed with the rifle, asked his supervisor for permission to shoot the suspect. However, the superior either did not hear or uh, responded too late. The officer turned to get confirmation from his supervisor when uh, and when he turned back to address the suspect, he had entered the west hallway unabated. And they found that a reasonable officer would have used deadly force at this point. I completely disagree with that, and I'll explain why in a second. The officer was justified in using deadly force to stop the attacker. The report stated, citing a section of Texas penal law, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so they go on to further explain why they think, why this this uh, agency and their report uh, thinks that this cop was in the wrong. And then, of course, this um, kicked off. Uh, mainstream media coverage. They talked to some victims. The victims uh, cried and blamed the police. Uh, and I want to explain why I, I'm not, I don't blame the police at all. So for ages now, for literally at least 10 years, the uh, the progressive crybabies who whine about the police using too much force have been asking the police to not shoot first and ask questions later. No questions asked. The cops shot and killed a 12-year-old within two seconds. 
Now they could have pulled up to the curb instead of pulling up on the grass. They could have asked a question. Put they your hands say, up, they drop the gun. Yeah, so Loman did none of that. He just saw, oh, black kid, boom, shoot him dead, okay? That's exactly what this cop did, exactly. Instead of shooting the suspect in the back, while there was children inside the school, by the way, and that, that was his reasoning for not shooting. For years, uh, especially crybabies on the left who hate the police have been asking for the police to not use deadly force so fast, okay? And this time, he didn't. He uh, he correctly asked, the, asked his supervisor for permission before shooting because he was worried, the cop was worried that he would hit a student. And why would he be worried about that? Well, you guys might remember that the media made a big deal out of a, a girl who was shot in a store because there was a knife-waving lunatic who the police shot and one of the bullets went through uh, the walls and hit a girl that was hiding, a 14 year old girl that was hiding uh, in a dressing room. Okay, so I think, and, th and this was carried countrywide. Okay, they made a big deal about this for like a week and blamed the LAPD once again for using deadly force too much. When there was a knife wielding lunatic, some guy named, what was it? A uh, 25 year old suspect, Daniel Lopez, who had already stabbed somebody in the store. He was running around this store, the Burlington store, uh, and the police shot him. One of the bullets went through the wall and hit this girl. OK, and they made a big deal about it. Blame the cops. So is it not? And, and things like this have happened before. This is just the latest example. And they blame the cops. And that's why they have that's why cops like this hesitate to shoot now, because they're, they get blamed every single time that they make a false move. And here there was a real uh, possibility that 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 he they they're blaming him for not shooting into the school. He just like he probably wasn't confident that he had the aim to hit the hit the perp uh, in the back because he was go entering the school. So one of the bullets could have easily gone into the school and hit a teacher or a student inside the school. His his concerns were completely valid. He did the right thing by waiting and getting permission from the supervisor. Unfortunately, the supervisor didn't uh, respond fast enough. But uh, but despite that, he should. It's a good. It's a good thing he didn't shoot. And by the way, imagine what they would have said if. Uh, he did, he did shoot and kill, shot this guy in the back and killed him guaranteed the wine who hate the cops will say they shot, uh, uh, they shot this, uh, this person without even giving them a chance. I wish they would have, uh, arrested him and given him a trial, but they shot him in the back. And also he was a Mexican. So they're going to say that the cop is racist guaranteed. That's what they're going to say. Now they could have pulled up to the curb instead of pulling up on the grass. They could have asked a question. Uh, Put they your say, hands up, they drop the gun. Yeah, so Loman did none of that. He just saw, oh, black kid, boom, shoot him dead, okay? Again, the cop says he didn't shoot because he was worried about hitting bystanders inside the school, which is a perfectly reasonable uh, excuse in my opinion, okay? And I think uh, given the fact that police have been criticized before, just as recently as uh, end of last month, this was in December of 2021, where the LAPD was criticized for shooting a bystander in the Burlington store. OK, so cops hear about these stories, too, and they are aware of the criticism they get in the media for shooting too fast. Here, they're calling them cowards because they didn't uh, shoot first and ask questions later. While they've been whining for decades that the cops are too violent and don't shoot uh, and to shoot too fast. Here they waited and now they're in trouble. Now, I'm only talking about this particular cop. We don't know exactly why the other cops waited so long to go in. So like I said, the Justice Department is still investigating. And if they find that the cops were in the wrong, I'll be happy to, happy to come out here and say that the cops waited too long for whatever reason. And if, if they find that it was because they were afraid of their for their own lives, then I'll be happy to call them cowards. OK, I am totally 100 percent fair to everybody, including the cops. And when anybody's attacked unfairly, I'm going to criticize that. Okay? I don't know what the rest of the media is going to do, but I'm going to be fair. Okay, So I've covered many stories where cops are overly violent, like Sergeant Paul Ease in Florida, who attacked uh, an arrested perp uh, who's somebody already in cuffs and then went out to choke another police officer, a raving lunatic, Okay, or a violent lunatic, I should say. And he's he's uh, he's on he's on leave right now. He's not no longer in the force. OK, at least for now, hopefully he's fired. But the unions are obviously going to fight that. <laughs> and cop unions are problematic in some ways because they defend bad cops as well, which is not a good thing and bad for people's trust in law enforcement. Uh, but anyways, I have no problem calling out bad cops. And I've done it before. I do it all the time. Talk about cops who are being arrested by the, uh, and prosecuted by the Justice Department. They always do good work to go after bad cops. Uh, but anyways, in this case, in this particular cop's example, I'm glad he waited. Who knows where the bullets would have gone? Then he would have he probably 
probably even if he killed somebody, he might have actually killed one of the uh, students inside and he would have been going to jail for manslaughter. Okay, and like I said, if he shot this person in the back, they would have said they killed an 18 year old Mexican. Uh, the police killed an 18 year old Mexican uh, boy. Okay, that's 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 that, that, that's what the story would have been. They would have called the cops racist once again. It's Texas cops, so easy to call them racist. <clears throat> Um, so that's what they would have done if they, sh if he had shot him in the back while he was going into the school, no matter what the cop did here, he would have been blamed. Okay. Guaranteed the progressives will find a reason to attack police, no matter what they do. So, so nobody should be concerned about anything they say. They have nothing valid to say. Okay. We should prosecute police officers who do the wrong thing. And we should be fair to police officers when they have a valid concern, uh, for not shooting. Okay. This is hilarious that they're attacking the cops for not shooting fast enough. Usually, oh, the cops are too violent. The cops shot a black guy too fast or whatever, whatever they're whining about. So last words here. I find it very disturbing that the media has chosen to blame the police officers on scene instead of blaming the psycho killer who went into the school and shot the place up. They're literally blaming the police more than they're blaming Ramos. I have I haven't seen a. I've, I've seen like one or two stories where they talked to like some of the classmates of Ramos and asked about him. And, and by the way, he turned out to be a psycho, OK, who was torturing little animals, OK, and bullying other kids. So that's the kind of person he was. And these are the kind of people who deserve the death penalty. That's why we need the death penalty. Uh, but anyways, that's a different conversation. Um, this guy is the one who did the shooting, the Ramos. OK, instead of blaming him, they're focusing on the people who are still alive, which are the police. So it's easier to blame the police because they're still here. OK, because Ramos is dead. So they're blaming the uh, convenient uh, scapegoats that they have here. The police are not at fault for what happened here. The shooter who had a gun, who bought a gun, a gun, horrible gun laws in Texas that allowed this psycho to buy guns. That's the first problem. They don't want to talk about that. The conservatives don't want to talk about that because they love guns and they want psychos to have guns. And because gun fa gun manufacturers need to make money. So the right doesn't want to talk about that. The left always love to blame the cops. So the right is distracted or doesn't want to talk about the real issue, which is psychos getting uh, getting guns. The left wants to blame the police no matter what. So both both sides have something to blame. OK, instead of the actual facts, which is what I focus on. OK, the fact is a psycho got a gun because the right wing allowed it and the police did the right thing by this police officer did the right thing by waiting. I don't know why the other police officer waited so long to go into the school, most likely because they were also told not to go in. Because from my experience, these rapid rapid response squads are quick to shoot and they ask questions later. OK, especially when there's children at stake, they go in as soon as possible. So there must have been a very compelling reason why these police officers waited for however long they waited, two hours or whatever it was to go in. There must have been a very good reason, probably the same reason that th that uh, this police officer waited, which is to get permission from higher up people to go in and take this guy out. So we'll see what happens. Again, I'm waiting for the Justice Department's report on exactly what happened. They're reviewing all the facts and they will come out with a report and uh, and I'll go over it and give you guys my take on it. And the Justice Department is very fair. They're going to look at all the sides and they're not going to bend to uh, the political climate, which is being anti-cop. That's the popular thing now. Uh, they're not going to bend to that. They're going to go through the facts and they will reveal what actually happened here and why the cops really didn't go in. OK, so when the facts come out, I'll be reporting them in an objective way as always. But that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos and other fair analysis on ongoing police, law enforcement and legal issues. See you guys next time. As always, peace. The official Justice Department policy towards mutants is this. Citizens or their dependents exhibiting abnormal DNA can declare for legal status as mutant Americans with full rights and privileges. As for the policy toward those mutants who enter the city illegally, that's aggressive capture and forcible deportation. But that's not usually how it goes. In over 60% of cases, the wall hoppers refuse to go easy. They choose death over expulsion. And the regs make it real clear, if a judge considers a mutant insurgent to be a clear and present danger to the security of the city, it is within his authority to terminate them on sight. Hale was just such a mutant. I could have killed him when I had the opportunity, and the rules would have been on my side, but I didn't. He deserved the chance to surrender, because he used to be one of us. Judge Dredd's last statement will be struck from the official record.